Hi there, this is Nigel. I'm part of the parent team here at Kids in Perth. Welcome to Kids in Perth's exclusive interview with Jim Cummings. Jim is a legendary voice actor who's brought to life some of the most beloved characters in animated films and TV shows. These include iconic Disney characters such as Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Darkwing Duck, through to the unforgettable voice of Scar from The Lion King. You can meet Jim and a host of celebrity guests at Supernova Perth, which is on at Perth Convention Centre over the weekend of Saturday the 24th and Sunday the 25th of June. Originally, this interview with Jim Cummings was meant to be written, but Jim isn't the best at typing. So he graciously took time to to gather his thoughts and, and record his answers. So while hearing these answers, we just had to publish it so you can experience the, the warmth generosity and personality of of this legend in this accidental podcast jim shares so much including you know his creative process a heartwarming experience with an autistic child along with so many improvised characters that simply put words on a page just won't do it justice so without delay, we hope you and your family enjoy this interview with Jim Cummings. Jim, can you share with us how you first got started in voice acting? I made my first demo tape in the mid-80s, 84, 85, and I kind of shopped it around and Frank Brandt and Caroline Hay were gearing up to do Dumbo Circus for a brand new service called the Disney Channel. <laughs> and uh, I auditioned for Lionel the Lion. He was Dumbo's buddy. And I got that job, and we did 65 episodes, and it lasted over a year and a half. Well, by the time that was done, I had an agent, and I was working regularly and doing TV commercials, radio commercials, and then it led to more cartoons, and here we are. What inspired you to lend your voice to such a variety of characters across different genres? Um, it, it wasn't even an inspiration so much as it was just something I knew I had to do. You know, this is what I do now, and uh, and it's always been my desire. It's always been been in me. When I was a kid, I was in speech class, and uh, I, I did extremely well. I was in character voices, and uh, it was an extenuation of something I always wanted to do. And so here I am. You've given life to some of the most beloved characters like Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. What's your process for capturing their unique personalities? The thing is, with some of those characters that were established, the trick is to uh, make it go right back to the original and make it resonate, make it sound like, uh, uh, you know, Paul Winchell for Tigger or Sterling Holloway for Winnie the Pooh, you know, are, are still doing it and capture their essence and capture their, their voice timbre and, uh, and number one, their personalities because they're not just voices they're characters and if you treat it as such you're you're going to be ahead of the game jim which character has been the most challenging for you to voice and why which character has been the most challenging for your for your to voice and why well that would be taz for the obvious reason he's very he's like the anti-poo he's you know and that's uh that can be you know do that for a couple hours and and you'll be kind of ragged so it is definitely Taz. Jim, your voice acting career spans decades in the industry. How has voice acting changed since you first started? Well, there weren't many people uh, trying to do it when, when I first started. There were maybe, I don't know, 50, 100. And now everybody and their congressman and uh, everybody and their dog seems to say, Oh, yes, I'm a, I'm a voice actor. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I don't know. It's... Uh, it's just an, an odd thing. It has really, really changed. Um, it, people can do it from their home. You don't have to go into a studio. And um, there are more venues for people to do this. You know, the interwe interwebs opened everything up. And so, uh, you know, more power to them. Go get them. Break a lip, I always say. Can you share a memorable moment or experience you had while working on a particular project? You know, sometimes I'll get to call uh, little ones who are sick in hospital and um, and cheer them up, you know. And uh, there was one that sticks out, and this is many years ago, 20-some years ago, and there was a little boy who um, 
who had uh, autism, I guess, and he had noticed that I did commercials, radio, TV commercials, and and put the, put it together with uh, the voices from cartoons on the Disney afternoon. And his dad, co- dad contacted me and asked if I was the guy who did the Wheaties commercial, who if I was the guy who did the cereal commercial, the car oil, the uh, Havoline motor oil commercial, and, and Pooh and Tigger, and the answer was yes. And he said, well... I've got my little son here. Can can he talk? Can you talk to him for a bit or two? And he said yes. I said yes. And I got on there, and he said, "Hello, I, I would like for you to do the voice of Bonkers D. Bobcat, who is, of course, the very first Toon Detective in Toontown." And so I said, "Well, uh, you know, here's Bonkers, but good. Now I would like you to do the voice of his Lucky, of Lucky Pacal, his human counterpart, who was Bonkers, blah blah." blah. And I went, "Well, how you doing there, kid? This is me, Lucky Pacal." And he goes, "Good. Now I think that you should do the voice of the, you know, the the hurdy gurdy man who was obviously from Sweden in the third episode of The Mask." And I went, "Well, I think that you were, you know, good." And he went on like this for about forty-five minutes. Well, at the end, his dad finally gets on. And says, oh, yeah, God, I'm so sorry. I had no idea it would be like this. He doesn't, you know. And his mother gets on. She said, and she's crying. And she's crying and crying. And and, and she goes, oh, this is crazy. I mean, little Joey, he doesn't do this. He doesn't talk like this. He doesn't. I'm so sorry. I mean, but but I just can't. And I said, oh, listen, don't worry about it. He's, you know, he's, what is he, seven or eight years old. He's excited. I would have been the same way if I, you know, if I got to talk to, uh, you know, you know, uh, Bullwinkle and Rocky, the squ- flying squirrel, when I was his age, she goes, no, no, that's not it. Joey doesn't speak. And I said, this little chatterbox? And she goes, we haven't, he's seven, eight years old. We haven't heard him speak since he was three. And now he's talking to you. And that is... Uh, that's that's one of the biggies, one of the biggest moments of my career, and uh, I've been in touch with him, and he's doing great. He's doing great, isn't that amazing? Uh, so anyway, there you have it. That's a true story there. Jim, can you tell us something that people might be surprised to learn about the world of voice acting? I'm not sure they'd be surprised to learn it, but it's a heck of a lot of auditioning. <laughs> you know, be prepared to. Um, you know, uh, get a decent microphone and some decent recording equipment and you never know, you may end up working right out of your house, which is something I do. And I I don't like it as much, but uh, as going in and seeing people, but what are you gonna do? Um, And uh, one thing you'd be surprised to learn is that a lot of famous face actors are doing it, which I'm not that crazy about, but I'll forgive them for now. Anyway. Jim, you've reprised the voice of several classic characters. How do you balance between maintaining the iconic sounds with bringing your own touch? You know, uh, you can only say, oh bother, so many times. So you have to keep the character current, but without tainting them, if that makes sense. Um, You know, like uh, you're not going to see Tigger doing any uh, skateboarding or, you know, he he probably won't be doing any rapping, neither will Pooh. So I think one of the keys is, you know, you have to keep the classic characters classic and the the uh, the more modern characters you know you differentiate and you maintain what it is that people have loved about them over the years and that's what I that's that's the way I approach it Jim what advice would you give to aspiring voice actors looking to break into the industry if you do a perfect impression of someone famous good you never know when you could use it if you do a terrible expression uh, impression of someone famous that's good too because it's a whole new character and you could plug that in you never know and um <clears throat> and you know i i've been known to mix and match voices like um well let's see hondo onaka is a good example i he's a bit of charles bronson and a bit of yule brenner and you mix the two together and you get hondo onaka and what's good is he doesn't sound like either one of them <laughs> but uh whatever you do don't let anybody know that these are top secrets secrets so there you have it Jim, you can mimic almost any voice. How did you develop this incredible skill? Well, I, you know, it kind of goes back to the earlier question about maintaining that. Um, And I don't know, you know, I was always in plays as a kid and I always wanted to be, you know, I would be eight years old and I wanted to play the guy who was a wizard who was a hundred years old. And I always, you know, you just stretch, you just stretch your, your limit and do what you can. 
and uh, hold on to something that you that you like and that you like and that other people like and hopefully the uh, casting directors will like too. Jim, given you've got such a range of characters and emotions you need to portray, how do you take care of your voice? You know, I don't yell. I don't yell. I don't scream and holler at football games. I'll clap and I'll whistle. Uh, you know, I never smoked one cigarette in my whole life. And, um, you know, you just have to treat your your voice like it's a muscle because it is your muscle and you have to keep it healthy. Jim, can you share with us some of your upcoming projects? Like what what can fans look forward to? Well, we're working on a new Mickey Mouse Funhouse. That's a beautiful thing. And then there's another one, a big one that no one, they don't have a, a name for it yet. And we've been actually slow uh, just this past year or two for for COVID. But uh, but stay tuned. T O O N E D. And you can stop and say hello to me at uh, Tuned In with Jim Cummings. It's my new podcast, Tuned In with Jim Cummings. So uh, be there or be square. Jim, what does it mean to you to see the lasting impact your characters have had on generations of viewers? Well, what does it mean to see the lasting impression and impact that the characters have? It's it's just beautiful Um, because, you know, there will be 40 year old moms, 50 year old dads who show up and and they'll have um, old pictures of themselves in, in, uh, you know, as going to Halloween parties as Darkwing Duck or Tigger or Winnie the Pooh and you know and they've it's just so nice so heartwarming to know that I've impacted the, more than one generation um, you know and uh, Winnie the Pooh generation uh, there's a new generation for Winnie the Pooh and Tigger fans about every three years you know uh, so I consider it an honor to be your Winnie the Pooh and you're a tigger, and I will always be there to bounce and have a smack roll for you. Jim, share with us your experience interacting with fans at Supernova. What's it like? Well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you one thing that always cracks me up is that uh, someone will come up, and it's usually, you know, it'll be a couple, and maybe their kids, and bless their heart, sometimes mom can't even speak because she gets to talk to Winnie the Pooh and Tigger and it just it's it's like a pipeline back to being five years old or seven or ten whatever you know and when Winnie the Pooh says hello there and I hope you're just as sweet as honey today everyone's five years old everyone's ten years old and that's a nice trip to take it's a very nice trip to take back in time and and you know you're you're sitting on the the uh the living room couch and you're eating milk and cookies watching the new uh adventures of witty the pooh or you know dark wink duck or whoever it may be and it is an honor that that is my experience it's an honor and i love to see those faces light up and i hope i can do it for a, a long time jim you'll be attending supernova per 2023 what are you most looking forward to about this event? Well, I've seen all the people. I love all the folks. Uh, and I get to bring, oh, there's my wife. She's calling me right now. And uh, speaking of the devil. And uh, it's, uh, oh God, she's going to shoot me. I can't talk right now. Um, anyway, like I was saying, oh, there, there's a little reality there for you. Um, I'm, I really look forward to, to seeing all the people. And, uh, and I like the food, but too, by the way. And uh, I, I promise you that no wallabies or kangaroos or, uh, will, will be harmed during my attending, even though I'll be bringing my, my wife and daughter. <laughs> so God bless everybody out there. Thanks. Thanks for noticing me. I had to steal that line from Eeyore, but I'm sure he won't mind. God bless. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Kids and Perts exclusive interview with Jim Cummings, the legendary voice of many iconic Disney characters such as Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Darkwing Duck and Scar from The Lion King. You can meet Jim along with a host of celebrity guests at Supernova Perth, which is on at the convention center over the weekend of Saturday the 24th and Sunday the 25th of June. Supernova Perth is an annual celebration of everything pop culture and gaming. It's family friendly with free entry for kids under 12, so long as they are accompanied with an adult. 
For tickets, you can visit supernova.com.au and that's supernova spelled S-U-P-A-N-O-V-A dot com dot A-U or find ticket links in the Supernova event preview that's on the Kids in Perth website.